Yes, you're welcome, friend. Uh, you're welcome. I can see a number of 12 people. Good. You're welcome, friends. Uh, you can rename your gadget. If you are to rename, you just go to participant, where there is participant, and then you on, on your right side, upper corner, you click on your name. There's a drop down to bring you an option of rename. So you can rename so that attendance is taken well. And we are happy and excited to be with you again our day two meetings I don't know who is our MC today Elder Sawe could help. Is the MC here today already? Okay. Uh, Brother Seka. Okay, I want to welcome all of you again. I can see our number is growing. We are now 22 and today we want to cover a number of uh, issues because we have 20, I mean, we have our two facilitators today. So I want to welcome you all in Jesus' name. So I want to welcome you all again in Jesus' name. Yeah, sometimes internet goes on, off, but I know by God's grace, we will be there. We are happy to see you. I don't know who is our MC today. Um, Brother Muhumuza, how are you today? 
I'm fine, my man. Good to see you today. And how is your family? The family is doing well. We thank God he's still protecting us. Remember, just wait for leaders to come in. You're requesting those who haven't renamed their devices to rename. I'm seeing Airtel A plus, A16 plus, you need to rename your device. I'm seeing uh, which other device. Yeah, if it will uh, 659, please rename and put that your real name, as Madam has said for your, for either taking off the attendance. So please rename your devices and put there your name. That would be much better for us. Those of you who don't know how to rename your devices, it's just simple. Right click on your name and choose rename, then delete the name which comes on of your device and write there your, your name. Right click on your name. When you right click on your name, it will bring a number of options. Your name? It will bring a number of options. To bring in mute my audio, stop bring video, bring choose virtual background, audio, then video, at, the watch end, background rename. at the end having rename. So you click on rename. rename. So you click, click on rename. rename. You we'll delete rename. what is there and write there your rename. Which will appear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Internet. Thank you so much. Stabbing Stabbing but later on, we can set. But later on, we can set. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Mama request to uh, 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 our sister Kawoya to mute her microphone Kawaii. because you are having a uh, lot of microphone because you are having a uh, lot of headphones. I think it is sorted out, it is sorted out. Okay, fine, since we are about 33 people here, I think we are set to begin. Uh, we wa want to welcome you all in Jesus' name. Thank you for sacrificing again to be here. And I pray that again today we are blessed as we, 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 we learn today. We, we are so happy and so delighted. Want to appreciate all of you who have done um, great in the discussions on our WhatsApp group. There are
Madam Esther, you are muted. Yeah, I went off my, <laughs> my connectivity went off. I am back. Um, we'll have a, a word from Elder Mboki. Are you there? Elder Mboki, are you there to greet us and then have uh, uh, give us a word of prayer and then we'll have our first facilitator. Elder Mboki yes, I'm here. Our... Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Elder. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. We kindly request you to take us through today's seminar and may your wisdom guide us from above. In Jesus' name I've prayed, amen. God bless you. Amen, thank you, thank you, Elder. Today we are blessed to have Uh, friends, just just a moment. We have been disturbed, but we are sorting. In two minutes, we will be back, or in less than a minute, actually. Thank you. okay we want to thank god for the blessing of today again let me hope you can hear me we can hear you madam okay thank you uh, we want to welcome elder william to take us through the first presentation elder william are you there Elder William, are you there? Elder William Mugera is our first presenter. And then we'll have the second presentation from our elder, Elder, elder Sawe Moses. We have two presentations and we are handling the Adventist music philosophy. I began by welcoming all of you and appreciating your commitment and your discussions on WhatsApp. I pray that we continue as we learn today again. I want to welcome our dear elder, Elder William Mugera, to start. We have already had an opening prayer from Elder Mboki Moses, the music director, Eastern Uganda Field. And so this time, I want to give it to Elder William Mugera, please. He can take us through the first presentation. And then immediately we'll switch the second presentation. Please take note of the questions of the points you'd love to make. We will have the two presenters and then we have the, 
the, the, the questions and answer. Thank you very much, um, Madam Esther and the other organizers. And a hearty afternoon to everyone. Despite the sad news that, you know, uh, surrounds us uh, day by day and moment by moment. Let me see if I can share my screen. Okay, while they sort that out, we shall continue. Um, I would like to welcome everyone to this session once again. And uh, I pray that you walk with me in this journey as we try to look at music in the worship setting. Uh, as I said yesterday, my favorite scripture in music in the whole Bible is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. For a very long time, I personally did not know that actually music can actually be so good that the preacher who had come with a prepared sermon can actually choose to say, I have nothing to preach because the music has done the preaching. For me, that presents to me the highest ideal in terms of where we would like to get. It simply means that these musicians, one, in whatever they did, they glorified God. It also means that the listeners or the congregation that were gathered in this place was touched and they felt that God had actually spoken to them. It means that the words, the intonation, and everything about this music that was sung on this particular day was so enriching, was so ennobling, was so touching that even the minister who had come with a prepared sermon felt that enough was enough. There was no need for a sermon. The musicians had done it. How I wish and pray that we can actually look at our music as capable of doing that. And just to re-echo one slide from my presentation yesterday, I would like to say that it will take five things, and today we're going to consider on one. Uh, first of all, the musician, the music itself must, must glorify God and it must edify the listeners. We said that, I think, several times yesterday. Madame Esther repeated it, I said it, and I think it goes without question. Secondly, in order for these musicians to be that, they need to be dedicated, dedicated to the Lord as his servants, de dedicated to the church, dedicated to the cause of the church. And they must be trained, they must be knowledgeable. They must be, knowledge they, they must be knowledgeable, they must understand the church, they must understand the God they serve. They must understand where their ministry lies in terms of leading people closer to God or farther away from him. So the musicians must be trained. That's why I said yesterday that we are so thankful for a session like the one we had yesterday that laid bare what the requirements are. Then we need an administration that is knowledgeable. And then uh, I must be the first to say that the challenges we have in music are cross-cutting. One time I visited a church, and actually a church elder came and actually said, we don't want instruments. Take your instruments out. That's not holy. I can't blame him because that's the best he knew. So there is a knowledge gap across the church, and I think that's what we're trying to drive at all the time. So we as leaders in the church, I'm a church elder, as a church elder, we must be knowledgeable. We must know and what is not acceptable. We must be an enabling environment. Then, of course, the people that hear the music must be knowledgeable as well. What is it that glorifies God? What is it that debases him? What is it that lifts the people and brings them closer to God? What is it that actually draws them farther and farther away from God? Like preachers, musicians stand in a very, very special position with a very fine and thin line that can define the results of their actions one way or the other. Musicians can draw listeners or hearers or congregations closer to God. Musicians can also draw 
listeners into a frenzy of excitement that takes them, them away from God. And not to uh, belabor the point, the church also needs to have sufficient equipment. When I was looking at the chat for the rest of the day, I saw a lot of talk about mining and so forth. There's an entire discussion that we're not, I'm not going to entertain today, but of course it has, there are issues that sometimes lead to that, although sometimes we are, we are the cause of that. Therefore, singing in the context of church worship or in the setting of church worship in the book councils for the church, Ellen G. White calls us and calls it an act of worship, just like prayer. So whether it's a choir singing, whether it's the congregation singing, it's the equivalent of a prayer. And this requires right expression. What are you singing about? What are you telling the congregation that you are singing to? Or what are you leading the congregation into as they sing along with you? It also means, it also requires a spiritual setting and meaning to that which we sing. The music should draw, should glorify God and draw both the musicians and the listeners closer to God. Musicians, we cannot sing to others when we don't sing to ourselves. We cannot have messages for others when we have no messages for ourselves. And I think that's very, very important. Very often musicians don't have time to be in church. They are not in Sabbath school. They are not anywhere. Every time they are trying to rehearse so that they can present. So what are we presenting if we are not learning? So musicians need to develop a, a, a caliber or a calendar that allows them to be part of church life in order for them to grow and be able to minister effectively and efficiently. The songs we sing must be spiritual. If we've come in a worship setting, it's a spiritual setting. There are choirs which are very good and they have composed songs that actually talk about how good they are. Maybe, I don't know, that might be appropriate for another occasion, but it's not appropriate for a worship setting. So don't come and tell us how great the good players are in a song when we actually came to worship. That is drawing our attention away from God and unto what you're actually talking about. The songs must be spiritual. I think that's, it can't be emphasized enough. We can't come to talk about great leaders in the context of worship. Maybe there might be a time or an occasion for that, but in the context of worship, the songs must be spiritual but they also must be filled with understanding and they that sing them must also sing them with understanding. The songs must be appropriate for the worship setting in which they are sung. If it's a funeral, please, please, please don't talk about how great the wedding was. There are grieving people there that need to be encouraged. So don't talk about a wedding. If we are talking about uh, heaven, talk about it. So the song must be appropriate for the setting. And this requires a bit of preparation I was going to see later on. The music leaders and choristers must do all in their power not to distract the congregation from meeting and worshiping their God. You know, everyone that comes to church either comes with a thanksgiving or they come with a request or a burden on their heart. Musicians stand in a very unique position because music has a way of reaching the human heart more efficiently and effectively than anything else. More efficiently than, and effective than even a sermon, if done right. So we must refrain from engaging or doing anything that might actually detract members from being able to meet their God. Maybe you are such good, so good at joking and uh, cracking jokes and so forth, but maybe in a worship setting, maybe the jokes may not actually be appropriate. Maybe you might be very good at you know, gestures and so forth, 
but maybe they just need to be limited to what is appropriate for the people to understand. So, if singing is worship, they that sing must, must actually be in worship, and they that listen must actually be in a worship experience. I think that's very, very important. And in order for us to do this, to actually have meaningful, insightful, and a rich music experience in our worship experience or setting, a number of things need to be actually in place. One is that the musicians need to understand their calling. We as musicians need to understand our calling. Our first client, our first customer is God. And whatever proceeds out of, my, of, our, of our mouth must actually honor him. We need to honor him with our talent. We need to honor him with our time. We need to honor him with our dress. We need to honor him with our voice. We need to honor him with our character. If you are a keyboard player, you need to honor him with that. I think 1 Corinthians 10, 31 sufficiently talks about that. Whatever we do, we must actually do to honor God. If our first client is God, God is not interested in entertainment. He's actually interested in a relationship between the worshiper and himself. So the musician themselves must come into a worship experience with their God. And they that listen to the song or the music must also come into a worship experience between them and their God. That's very, very important and very pertinent. The second client or customer is the congregation or the audience for whom we sing. What are we trying to do to, do to these people? What is the aim of actually us singing to them? One objective is to draw them closer to God. And that's very, very important. Another objective could be actually to reach their condition and point to God as the one who is able to deal with them. Some people have come with thankful hearts. Some people have come with heavy hearts. And as I said earlier, musicians stand in a very, very solemn position to be able to connect the person that has come to worship God in whatever condition they have come in, with whatever frame of mind they have come with, to meet their God and have fellowship with him. When you combine these two customers or clients, you find that a musician stands in a very, very unique position. But by the grace of God, we can rise up to that calling and execute it to God's honor and glory. The songs we sing may be the only sermon that some people hear in the course of the day. That might be the only sermon. And I guess as we sing, we should ask ourselves, have I actually pointed the listener or the hearer to God and to Christ? This is a solemn responsibility that we should take with all seriousness, that we should actually honestly pray about that God empowers us and enables us to execute so that we can honor him and reach out to the people that he has appointed us to reach. Knowing how big a responsibility is, I think the first thing a musician does is to dedicate himself or herself to God as the minister, as a minister of the gospel through music. At that point in time, we realize that the talents we have are God's and they belong to him and they are to be used, to be used for his own glory. At that point in time, we can dedicate time for rehearsals and so forth. At that point in time, we can dedicate our energies. At that point in time, we can do what it takes to have an effective and efficient music ministry in the church. When we dedicate ourselves, we would seek to honor no one but the God that has appointed us as co-ministers with him. 
And again, when I reflect on what has been happening on the chat, the many, many uh, contributions that have come through the chat since yesterday, I think some of the challenges come from here. Some of us fail to understand that our first client is God. And that actually it's also God that has given us his, our second client, which is the congregation. It's a tough position. It's a difficult position. It's a unique position that we're standing. Then, of course, once we understand where we sit as ministers of the gospel through music, then the third, the second, the next aspect is actually preparation. A music leader does not rush to church and just begins. We prepare, we take time to prepare. We need a godly life. It takes preparation for that. We need skill. We need to be able to do what we do with sufficient skill and knowledge. And we need to have understanding as, a, as well as a mature level of spirituality. That's part of the preparation. When we see God coming to Samuel and inviting him, Samuel had been prepared for a long time. The mother took him to Eli. And he was prepared. So that by the time his ministry came, he was fully prepared. Endeavor to learn the songs, whether they are hymn books or other songs and so forth. Endeavor to learn them. In fact, for me, in response to yesterday's question, I'd like to say that a music leader is constantly growing. We grow by learning new songs. We grow by learning the songs in the hymn book. We grow by learning different skills and so forth. There should come a point where a musician actually knows all the songs in the hymn book and they can actually sing them even if they did have an opportunity to go through the song yesterday. Have you ever been in church and a minister says, in the middle of the song, he says, let's sing hymn number 15 when you didn't prepare for it, then what do you do? So I think we should be prepared. Choirs, choristers, and the music leaders lead the congregation, and they must lead with knowledge and understanding. It's, 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 it's not exactly uh, overwhelming or pleasant to say, but many choirs know a lot about their special music, but they cannot sing three, four, five hymns from the hymn book of the church they claim to belong to. And then we get less skilled people to come and lead out in congregational singing, and they just do as much damage to it, and nobody wants to listen to it. So fellow musicians, I invite you, our first Syllabus as musicians is the hymn book, if I can call it that. Learn the hymns. When you've learned them, then you can lead them. And even if they call on a hymn that you didn't prepare for, you can actually lead it because you've taken the time to learn. Then, of course, we need to prepare ourselves to lead the church in song. This requires time. I think Madame Esther said it yesterday. <laughs> if you are the music leader, you can't show up when the service has already started. This manifests itself, especially when we are traveling, when empires are traveling and so forth. Brothers and sisters, whether you are serving in your home church or a church that is kilometers away, church begins the same time. Church begins at the same time. And we need to be part of that. Musicians are almost always late. And all that kind of stuff. Then they invite a choir and it spends 10 minutes preparing the song. Which song they have already been preparing? They stand in front of the congregation. They spend 10 minutes trying to get the key. 
They spend another so many minutes trying to get this and whatever the case might be. All that actually contributes to a distraction of the audience because the audience wants continuity. The congregation wants continuity. They have been prepared all along. They have gone through the preliminaries. They want the special music so that they go into the sermon. So you don't need a whole 10 minutes. And even choirs that actually take a procession to come and walk, you take 10 minutes just to walk up to the pulpit. First of all, the choir knew that they were going to sing. Uh, what I've seen some organized churches do is that when it's about time for the choir to sing, the choir just marches and actually takes their position. By the time they call them, they are ready and they start. But then the marching becomes an, an activity itself that takes up time. Then, of course, the preparation and getting the key takes up time. And then all that kind of stuff. By the time the song is sung, and sometimes even they are, even it fails actually to come out, the, the congregation is lost. Then, of course, the dress that was amply spoken about yesterday. Uh, in as much as we should be neatly and smartly dressed, the attire we have should not become a distraction that people instead of looking at us instead of worshiping their God. As I said before, it's a thin line. And then, of course, the appearance and the gestures and so forth. And I'd like to emphasize that if we're talking about congregational music, the best musicians should lead out. But we have to call themselves the best musicians. They can't lead out in congregational singing. Then they come and give us the best special item when congregational singing has died. Congregational singing is the only time that you can sing along with the audience or the congregation and bring them closer to God. Another area where we have, uh, we'd like to talk about is actually coordination. If we are going to be effective, in the ministry of music in worship setting, there must be sufficient coordination. The church music leader or coordinator, as we were up, up, rightly told yesterday, needs to understand and to know the preaching program. Who is the preacher? What is the theme? Who is the preacher? What is the theme? So that we can actually organize music that actually Compliments, but does not divert from the theme of the preaching as much as it is possible. I would rather have a hymn for a special item that actually complements the sermon than have a very beautifully sung special item that actually talks entirely the opposite of what the sermon is going to be. Then we need to liaise with the pastor, the elders, and the pulpit team so that we can prepare. The congregation needs to be prepared. You know, I, sometimes you see that you know, the congregation is not prepared. The pulpit team has already showed up. They are not even ready. Uh, it disrupts the worship experience. Then, of course, there is need for coordination between the choristers, the people that are playing the instruments, uh, the, the vocalists that are leading out in the songs. There needs to be a symphony, a harmony of sorts that actually brings out the best of music that people can actually have a rich worship experience. As I've said before, congregational music is very important in our churches. Some of our churches have actually <laughs> done away, almost done away with congregational singing. You say, yeah, you can sing one song and then we, the puppet team will come because they have 100 announcements, then they have 100 promotions, then everything else comes into the, into, into the, the worship experience. There is nothing as dangerous as this in the context of trying to bring worshipers into a worship experience. And I'd like to give the example of my church where I pray for. I am a member of Kireka Church District, Nali ICDA Church. We have at least 20, 25 minutes of music every Sabbath, and we have done that deliberately. So that by the time the pulpit team comes and arrives, 
the members are sort of in a worship mood in, and are ready to, to have a meaningful worship experience. Let the congregation participate. Involve them. You know, some churches enjoy special music so much that they have actually reduced the congregation to spectators. They come like they have come to watch a football match. They see the scoring of the goals. They see the penalty kicks. They see the corner kicks and they go home. By getting the congregation involved in singing in the church, you're actually involving them in the worship experience. So yes, there is a place for special music, but let there be a place for congregational singing. Vibrant, meaningful congregational singing. Special items are good and they are allowed. And as we said earlier, the first client is God and the next client is given by God or entrusted to us by God and that's the congregation. Then, of course, we need to uh, coordinate with the team that is actually executing this. If you, have a, if you have an organist in the church, for God's sake, please wait for them to give that key. Don't start and then the, the organist starts in a different key. Or the organist has started, then you start in an entirely different key. If the key is not appropriate, communicate so that there is a kind of organization that actually lies around or, uh, you know, uh, takes us, brings a sense of order in the church. There are certain churches you have been to and you find that the organist is actually playing a key, then the chorus feels the key is inappropriate, they start in an entirely different key, but the, the, the organist is still playing, so you have two keys in the same song, and sometimes even the, the people who are joining in actually come in a different key, and you have three keys in one song. A recipe for chaos and disorganization. This should not be in the church of God. This should not be uh, in, the, uh, in the worship experience in the church. I'd like to simply say that when we come to worship, we come to meet God and musicians stand in a very special way of helping not only themselves, but helping the congregation they lead through song, whether it's choral music, or congregational music or special items closer to their God and a rich, meaningful and beneficial worship experience. We need to be sure that we are prepared. We need to work together. And as I said yesterday, this is not the work of one person. It's not just the music department alone. Church elders, pastors and so forth, we don't need 1,000 announcements every Sabbath. We are missing you. I'm missing you, Elder. Oh, I think we are missing Elder. Mm. I think Elder. I think, I think it's it's it is. <laughs> We are missing. I think you missed Elder. Yes. It is true. We are missing him. Okay. We are missing him. Are missing him Yes, Peter. 
it's repeating the almost one minute to the that we are him. We don't know how we're we going to do it. It is fine, we continue. But I request us to mute ourselves. Katamba is microphone is very active. Yes. Okay, friends. Uh, we are looking at the, the, the music in worship and Elder was trying to emphasize on how we need to prepare ourselves for music for worship. He emphasized the congregational singing, which is very, very important. Many times we have less congregational singing. So Elder was emphasizing congregational singing is very, very important. If you could give uh, at least congregational singing two, three, four, five songs is very, very important. That is why we need the elders here because the announcements in our local churches take a longer time. He was also emphasizing on preparing for worship, which is very, very important. And we said from yesterday that the chorister leads the worship, is carrying people in worship. Music is worship itself. And so when we talk about worship, we are talking about music. And so it needs a lot of preparations. And then he was emphasizing on the vibrant congregation. Can we surely have a vibrant congregation? It is very, very miserable. When you walk to many local churches and they are singing miserably, when you are saying singing miserably, I believe you can all testify on how uh, uh, many of our congregational singing happen. And so a vibrant congregation is a congregation where they are singing one at the right tone or the right speed of the song. Number two, they are singing with understanding. Singing with understanding also makes the congregational singing vibrant. A vibrant congregational singing is where at the end of it all, the members will feel yes, they were worshiping. I don't know if you can testify. Have you worshiped from English speaking congregations and then the local speaking congregations? Have you ever noticed how the music is in both the English? I'm just giving an example for the many of, of for those that I've, I've, I've attended to. And so vibrant congregational singing helps and carries the congregation to worship and to God. And so it is very, very important uh, to ensure that there's vibrant congregational worship through music. And then where's the sound? Sound you're off. Elder Angela, you can continue. Mrs. is still sorting something here. Her machine is down. She'll be using this one shortly. You can continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder. And uh, I just wanted to say that, that um, we need to, the church, uh, our churches should ought to be organized enough. You know, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't talk about 20 announcement every, uh, announcements every Sabbath. By the time you finish the 10th, nobody remembers the first one. So how can we make announcements more meaningful in church that uh, people can actually, uh, participate in worship, get to know what is happening in their church, but they are not lost in a mountain or a forest of announcements, which they forget anyway, because 
it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are efficient because we have a thousand announcements. You know, so how can we how can we cut down on the announcements? How can we consolidate the announcements? How can we find uh, ways of uh, passing on information uh, in a way that allows uh, for a meaningful number of announcements, but also allows people to worship? Okay, sometimes church elders bring the announcement is for elders, and you bring it in front of the whole church. The whole church is not a, a group of elders. Communicate to the elders alone. You are talking about elders council meeting, and there are five elders, and you are talking to a congregation of forty people, and you spend twenty minutes talking about elders council meeting. I think we have a number of issues that we just need to uh, to sort out so that we can ensure that we have we maintain time for music. I've not come to talk about announcements as bad; they are good. It's one way of passing on information to the church. Yes, but. Sure. I think they need to be few enough in number that one, they can be of benefit to the church, but they can also, they don't also disrupt the church at worship. And uh, yes, I think uh, I'll just like to sign off because I'd like to leave time for the second presentation and then we get sufficient time for questions. We can talk about this. I think what we're trying to do is to touch the important aspects which if we actually look at as leaders, whether church elders or pastors, which you can look at as musicians, we can actually go back into our respective churches, try to implement them, and we can actually see monumental change in the worship experience in our church. Music for me, I would like to give the testimony as I close. I've been in the Adventist church for 30 years, but I came because of music. I came because of music. At the age of 14, at the age of 14 or so, <laughs> I was in secondary school, and Pastor Kagwa at that point in time was a youth leader at Gaza SDA Church. And he had spoken to me about Adventism, and we spoke and he spoke and he spoke. Nothing seemed to make sense. Then they invited me to their church. It was the music that drew me to church. I went as a visitor the first Sabbath. I took myself as a visitor without invitation the following Sabbath, and I've been inviting myself as a visitor, although now an official visitor, for the past 30 something years. So I believe that music has a way of reaching people that maybe even words can't, and if done rightly, it's an effective arms of actually good church service and effective evangelism, as probably Elder Sawa is going to share with us. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share with you. I look forward to sharing with you through comments and questions. You can begin posting them in the chat and so forth as we listen to the next presenter. I think I'd like to be fair so that the next presenter has ample, has ample time. Thank you very much. God bless. Yes, thank you very much, Erda. May God bless you so much. We have benefited. Uh, thank you for the good presentation. Now, we are going to have our second speaker. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we are going to have our second speaker yeah, and, and Elder, if you are around, this is your time. Because we need to have time for questions and answers. As we said earlier, Madam Esther, as he, she informed you, that we need to record all what we have heard. If you have a question, record it so that you can ask it when the time for questions comes. So I want to call upon our elder, second speaker, if you are there, and is going to take us through music in evangelism. Thank you very much. May God bless you. If you're around, you can take over. OK, thank you. Thank you, uh, Elder Peter. Our next presenter is Elder Sabwe Moses. but. He's going to be represented by Elder Subuga Ronald to make the presentation. Elder prepared the presentation. His voice is not well to speak, so to speak the voice to come out. So he delegated the presentation to Elder Ronald Subuga. 
as he speaks, know that it is Elder Sawe speaking. <laughs> Elder Suga, thank you for accepting the responsibility. And please, you can take over Amen. now. Amen. Amen. A blessed afternoon to all of us. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Yes, we can hear you. We do hear yes, you. Oh, okay. Okay, amen. A blessed afternoon to all of you. Um, let me share the presentation. Can you see the presentation? Yeah, it can be yes. seen. Okay. All right, so I, I would like to take this opportunity to thank God for giving me this opportunity to share with you what else. And um, we'll be going through this particular second session of Adventist philosophy of music, which is going to entirely look at uh, evangelism music evangelism. Before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come unto you at this point in time as we continue to study through thy Holy Spirit, lead us and speak to each one of us as music leaders within our congregations to serve you the right way. We pray this through the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, looking at uh, music evangelism, we have um, a lot to address. When we say evangelism, for example, specifically here in Uganda, the first thing that will is uh, efforts, for example. We're looking at a real established effort, which even when we have TMI into an effort. How is music has to be done by the musicians ourselves to ensure that we get the right, we get the souls for Christ, not for a short period of time but to stay and wait for his soon return that he is coming back and very soon. So we'll go into the presentation. And um, according to the voice of prophecy, Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that music, music alone it's man's greatest communication through the avenue with God. How do we get to that? By devoting ourselves entirely, entirely, entirely to Christ. When, when you read um, Ephesians 5.19, Paul has some precious words for us there. Um, Elder will be able to have that uh, verse pasted in the chat. But what is key is uh, for all of us, all the music that we have, all we sing is supposed to be uplifting our Lord. Without that, then it is something else. So it's very important to always note and know that all the music we sing, we worship with, should be glorifying our God. That's why um, when we look at, uh, if you remember our key, key text Mama, Mama Music gave us yesterday, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, 
says that, uh, so what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. So it's not just about singing, but you have to be, you have to concentrate, you have to know that you are worshiping God while singing. And that should be drawing many other souls to Christ. Music itself has a lot of power. Power that can do both good and bad at the same time. That's why music has the power to impress the heart with the spiritual truth messages. Depending on the message that is in the song, depending on the instruments that are used in the song, depending on the rhythm of the song, depending on the pitch of the song, all that gives you, speaks directly to the heart. And what goes to the heart, that's what comes out of the people with time. Through their life, livelihood, or even within their day-to-day -day life, or give bread our Christian thoughts and morals. The other point is, uh, music has the thought to serve God and the devil at the same time, if you're not careful. Depending on how the song is, uh, it can have the devil being worshipped instead of God. That's why we are supposed to be very careful as we run to different producers to have our music produced, church music produced. Let it be music that is going to be used in, um, in a church choir and a singing group. We know that it's any members who are in the singing group that do not want to participate in the church choir. Eldam Gura was uh, mentioning earlier on, but we as leaders, we have to ensure that we streamline the process and ensure that um, at least all members of the known in court singing groups are members of the church choir for the, for the best music ministry, because then they'll be able to understand and learn how music is supposed to be which arrangement to use. Even when they get to the time of recording, they know which producers to use to have the right music that will glorify God in all the ministerial work. Let it be through the church, let it be through um, uh, radio stations, let it be through the TV station, in line with uh, evangelism. The other point is uh, those that, therefore who select music for this church must exercise and in its use. That's why you realize um, different songs are, are applied to different settings and functions where you have, um, for example, weddings, where you have um, efforts and plays and all. So as you prepare the music, ensure that the target audience does not only come in for that particular music or entertainment and thereafter go away because then if it's not glorifying God, if it's not directing them to Jesus Christ, then they'll not be able to stay even after that particular session is done. So it's very important to have the right music prepared for all categories of people. As we focus on evangelism, the other point is, um, remember Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse that one, that uh, everything we do should be glorifying God. Same for the music. Care must be, must be exercised that while the values in music which fail to express the glory of God are avoided at all times. Choir leaders, Please ensure that not only the words, 
because you say the words, the message is okay, but then the instruments used and the arrangement of the music can completely produce poison or distort the message and we will not be able to achieve the desired outcome. The other issue to look at is uh, certain music forms such as jazz, rock, and their related hybrid forms are inappropriate because they're full of entertainment elements that divert, divert the people from glorifying God. It will end up glorifying the singers, glorifying the, the people who wrote the music, but it's not glorifying God yet. All music is supposed to be glorifying God. So the other point that we have is music in evangelism. As music is one of man's greatest communication avenues with God, music is as well one of man's greatest avenue to communicate about God. What we package in our music is telling the world about God. How we do it, it's through music. Like Elder has just testified, it's music that drew him to the church. Even when the pastor had tried to, to, to preach to him in all ways possible, he was not one at first. But when music came in, he finally accepted the call. So know that out there, even during this critical time we're in, um, for example, we have uh, quite a number of uh, people who have put up um, the local local stations in quotes Ebizindalo. You, if you can find time and play the right music, church music for the people in our community, I know that God is talking to someone within that particular session through music. Remember, because you might not be able to have the right someone due to the arrangement of the day, but if you play only five songs, there will be people in the community that are waiting for that music for their spiritual uplifting. So it's very key to ensure that um, the music we have directly communicates about the God we live, the God we serve, our God who is our refugee at all times. Therefore, great care must be exercised when making the selection of music for evangelism. Evangelism should display the highest principles of dignity and excellence characteristic of uh, our message to ready the people of the soon second coming of Christ. We have to make sure that the music we select throughout our evangelism efforts, uh, uh, sermons, and all preparations should be ready to draw the people to Christ and as well inform them of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. This is what the music should do in evangelism. The music we prepare, the music we serve, the music we use in our evangelism efforts, the music we use in our, um, let it be children ministries, let it be youth ministries, we have to ensure one, direct the hearer to Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. Now, this goes to the message that you, part, you prepared in the song. It has to make sure that it shows the people Jesus, not the people who are doing the singing, not the people who compose the song. Yes, we thank God for the gift he gave you to, com to be a composer, but ensure that as a whole package, the rhythm, the arrangement of the song, all that directs the hearers of the music to Jesus, not to you, not to the choir, not to any other, but to Jesus Christ alone. The second point is to prepare the way for the presentation of the message from God's word. The message has to be coming from the Bible because you, Many times you'll get um, artists prepare different music uh, as per uh, ways of life they've gone through. But at the same time, it's very key for, her, for us to have the music 
having a message of God reaching to the people. Continue its appeal and evoking a response from the hearers. When they, when they hear the message in this song, what is their response? Do they look to God? Do they, do they, do they have the sense of appreciating God and understanding, understanding that he's that supreme. supreme. So, so you have to make sure that you have to make sure that hello hello we are getting you oh okay just got an echo okay sorry about that okay okay on. so you have to make sure that um uh the message is from god's word okay sorry about point number three is um the music should be played and sung by those whose lives are consistent with the message they bear. Now, here we have to ensure that um, the message in the song, the message that is being sung by the different members of the choir, they should be living. They should be a living example of the message they are bearing. It's very challenging to have um, a very good choir with uh, very many good songs, but then the members are doing exactly the opposite. It's very key for, for us because that's one of our very, very first pillars uh, in evangelism. It's, it's um, am I a living example? It's not a business of uh, do as I say, not as I do. No, no, not at all. It, I have got to be a living example as a musician. I have to be portraying what I am giving the people, the message I'm giving the people. So that's very key for us to ensure that we have all the people get the message as it is supposed to, as it's supposed to be, without distorting it. Because if we we preach something different from what we're doing, then we do not have uh, the people appreciating the Jesus we love, the Jesus we serve, the Jesus our savior. The other point is uh, music should be a vehicle for the deep impression of the Bible truth, which will inspire a positive change in the life, lives of many. It's, it's it, the, it, the, it has to have the Bible truth solely going out to all the people who are listening to that music. That way, they'll be able to have a positive change in their lives. With the world that um, is full of um, negativity and a lot of uh, challenges here and there, people need to have a, a good message that will be able to give them hope to carry on because there is a comforter and a care above all. Then the other point is the music should be presented in a careful, carefully planned and orderly manner. There are simple things that we look at normally when choirs come to present, how they get to the stage, how they address themselves on the stage. That's the other point where many people would prefer being in singing groups other than the church choirs because some say in the church choir you're even not allowed to shake your body or to have all those other moves that people want to make when they're in the singing groups. Now, it's very, very, very important as musicians to have an orderly manner in the way, in the way that we present the music that we have and ensure that still in that process, God's name is glorified. The other point is the music should be simple, it should be melodic and presented without emphasis on a personal display. Why we glorify God, not the people in the choir? Because once you do not do that, you'll have people distracted. People will get their attention they will lose out on the message and have their attention on the members of the choir instead, which is not good at the end of the day, because then we want them to be able to receive the message that is in the 
music. The other point is uh, the music should give precedence to the preaching of the word, both in emphasis and in allotment of time. How do we achieve this? Depending on the message of the preacher, for example, like Elder was saying earlier on, the message in the song can either distort the message of the preacher or uplift it or encourage people more. So we have to prepare. It's a, it's a whole it's er, element of um, the worship team to ensure that the music we have prepared for the day is in line with the word that's going to be preached, that's one. But at the same time, it shouldn't be in position to distort the message. Even when the song is good, if it's not in line, then you'll have people miss out on the message and not be able to achieve the desired outcome. The other point is uh, music should maintain a balanced appeal to the emotion and the intellect and not just charm the senses. Now, when this is uh, something uh, very, very, very scientific. That's why the arrangement of the music is very key. Why we look at it that way is, if it's not balanced, not only in the voices, not only in the tempo, not only in the, in the instruments used, not only in the, in the, the song, that can be able to either destroy the song, not only the song, but the message as well. That's why we say that the music should be able to maintain a balanced appeal to the emotion and the intellect. That element in the, in the people, in God's people, they should be able to receive it at a balanced point in their life so that at the end of the day, they do not lose out on the message that is in the song. The other point is to be understandable and meaningful in content and the style for the largest possible cross-section of the audience. We have very, very many people using different styles of music. Even today in our church, it's a challenge. The music we had in the early, early 70s, 80s, and 90s, when you listen to it compared to what we have today, you can say, if not careful, you can even wonder where we're going. Because then the youth will tell you a, a different story, then the children will tell you a different story. But all in all, we need to be able to ensure that the music is understandable, it's meaningful in the content itself, and the style used should be able to uh, capture a cross section of the entire audience because in the audience you have um, all the people that um, are listening to the music and you cannot tell who is going for which kind of music but ensure that it's meaningful and the style bridges that gap as well. Okay, so the other point we have is um, the music should never be arranged in a secular worldly styles which are ever designed to entertain the body and not the soul. That is a very, very, very important point that we have to take care of. The styles that we have is in, uh, I can locally translate it as, um, the rhythm, the, 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 the rhythm in the song, if it's going into rock music, if it's, know that first and foremost, whatever content will be coming out of that will be entertaining the body because rock, rock, music, rock music is designed for that. Yes, the body will feel hyped and all, but know that the soul is losing out and you are not glorifying God. So be very, very careful now this goes to our producers who are online and many others. Ensure that the music that we produce is designed for the soul 
not to entertain the body. And in that way, it will be glorifying God. Okay. We have some challenges as well. And uh, one of the biggest uh, errors or challenges that we make is uh, most evangelism crusade organizers think that uh, winning souls is best through entertainment atmospheres. That's why you have very many skits at the beginning. Let's get the people, these kids will get the people coming in. These kids will get the people coming in. These songs that are, um, have, uh, have the Mdigido and all, all these songs that are used. Yes, they'll attract the people to come in for that particular session. And if not, many times you've observed as well, once that session is closed for the skits and that kind of music is closed, the people will still go back to their businesses and do as they're about to do. So it's very important for us to ensure that the organizers think that winning the source is best for the entertainment of affairs, yes, but it's a very, very, very big error that we make that has to be corrected. So they always invite those choirs whose music is highly entertaining. Yes, claiming that such music attracts people to attend. The people will come just for that entertainment and they'll go away. And remember, our role is not to entertain them, but to draw them to Jesus Christ. So we need to correct that, um, to correct that error as we make the music, the choirs, please ensure that the music is not about entertaining. The music should be about drawing souls to Christ and glorifying him. The other error is uh, they claim that the gospel alone cannot attract the people. Okay, but we have testified, we have gotten a testimony from Elder Mgera who said that uh, he came to church as a, result of, uh, uh, as a result of music and many more many others who are on this platform right now as well. I'd want to, to believe that many others have been drawn to Christ as a result of good music, not entertaining music. So it's very, very important to ensure that we give people from the start the right doors, the right, the right, the right message so they'll be able to to accept Jesus Christ, not through entertainment, but solely after understanding that he is calling them uh, back to him to live as uh, God's people. The other error is uh, once people come in in big numbers for the skits and the entertainment is done, they'll go away. Now that leads us to a poor retention as well, poor membership retention in our, in, our, in our churches. Because then people, when they, when the effort is done and they come to church, they'll realize that there's no more entertainment anymore. And they'll be wondering what happened. <laughs> and, they, and in the end, they'll slide back and go back to where they came from because then they did not find the entertainment they saw during the effort time. So it's very important. That's why even um, uh, our way of evangelism is now in is stressing the point of um, me being a living example to my, to my brother, to my sister, so they can accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior through the TMI, T TYI, and TCI. The other error we have is uh, whenever people are entertained, their intellect is affected. And in the end, they become drunk. As a result, they miss the message preached to them. There'll be, instead of the message, instead of the people picking the message, they'll be remembering the entertainment that they, they, they had in the, at the beginning of the session. And that will take them away from the message. So it's very important to ensure that we do not entertain the people, or we do not interfere with the intellect, but ensure that we give them the right message from the start. Mm -hmm. okay. What is our way forward? <laughs> way forward is there is power for winning souls. How are we going to achieve it? Correcting what we have not been doing right. There is a great pathos and music in the human voice. And if the learner 
will make determined efforts. He will acquire habits of talking and singing that will be to him a power to win souls to Christ. Music has a very, very, very strong element in winning souls for Christ. Only and only if it's done right. Let's ensure that we use the right message, the right rhythm, the right um, tempo, the right arrangement, and draw souls to Christ. The other issue with our way forward is, um, is to use the message in the songs should be witnessing to Christ. It's coming from the Bible, yes? But then if people learn of the experiences I have gone through, you have gone through, through music, testifying the greatness of God, many will be able to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. The other issue is um, God has blessed us with uh, children in our families, in our churches. We need to ensure that music education begins at an early stage in the lives of our children. That will get in line with uh, uh, what Solomon says in Proverbs 22.6, we'll train up the child in a way they are supposed to grow and they'll be able to glorify God because they are today's church. Our children have to learn the right music from the start. Do not wait for them when they have grown up or in their teenagers. Let's start early enough. They'll be able to do the right thing because they have been taught early enough. The other issue, is, the other point is never compromise high principles of dignity and the excellence in efforts to reach the people just where they are. That we find that in testimonies for the church um, and the evangelism uh, from the from Ellen G. White. So ensure that you do not compromise. You you you'd want to strike a balance, yes, but ensure as choir members, as musicians, as music leaders, you do not compromise because you know the right thing to do. Always do the right thing and God will be able to sustain you to have the people get the right message throughout the songs. It does not make sense uh, when you 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 let you let a wrong song be played in an effort, for example, all in church, for example, all in your car, all in, in your home. Please ensure that all the music that we have still hopes and upholds the values of our Christ. The other point is we have uh, to get uh, faith building music. Let the music speak both to the head and to the heart. It should be balanced according to the instructions and the counsels from the Bible and the <laughs> prophecy. Please, please ensure that the music is speaking both to the head and to the heart. If it's only speaking to the head, yes, the body will be happy, but then people will lose out and we'll, we will not be doing our job of the Great Commission to get the message to the entire world. So please ensure that the music is faith building. It's building the people's faith. It's giving them hope. It's showing them Jesus and they should be able to accept him as their personal behavior, be, as their personal savior. Sorry about that. Then remember sometimes music is the only medicine the heart and the soul need. In, a, in times like this, we have him, uh, him 593, for example, in the SDA church hymn. Uh, in times like this, give them the message, give them the medicine to the heart and the soul because it's tough times, yes, but we still have to go on. That's why um, uh, 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 one person say that music is what feeling sound like. If you do not have the right music for the right time, then you're losing out but ensure that the music 
we give out there to the people, not only in efforts, not only throughout the service, not, not throughout their homes, it should be the medicine for the heart and their souls because everyone is going through some challenges of sort at any one point in time. That's why you'll find that uh, if the people happen to listen to the right music, they'll be able even to memorize it. You've gotten challenges of people memorizing Bible verses, but they can sing for you a song from the first stanza to the last stanza. Why? Because music is the medicine to the heart and it speaks to the soul directly. It is also very important as well that we contemporary culture and music trends to the influence of our own music styles and direction. This applies whether we are talking about personal music preferences or music used for evangelism. It's very, very important to let the Holy Spirit to guide us through as we write the songs, as we compose the songs, as we record the songs, as we arrange the songs to ensure that we do not use only our, we use our music styles and directions, but be able to achieve the objective of evangelism. Um, the other point is, through our TCI, Total Children Involvement, Total Youth Involvement, and Total Member Involvement, as Adventists, we should live the spiritual music that we sing, sh showing our love of Jesus Christ to the world. Now, this is the best sermon that each one of us can make. Leave it. Don't speak about it, but leave it. Leave the spiritual music. People will be able to see Jesus and accept him as uh, their personal savior. The other point is let us make music which is acceptable to God only when the heart is sanctified and made soft and holy by its facilities, as it's written in the later evangelism page 512. So these are some of the references we have. You'd be able to get them after the presentation, to be able to dig further, to be able to understand how music impacts the evangelism to be able to draw many souls to Christ. I thank you. God bless you all. And Ephesians 5.19 says, uh, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Um, please, at all times, ensure that you do everything in your power to ensure that the, the music you sing, the music you write, the music you compose, it's coming direct from your heart and it's going to the Lord. Our very, our, our very important steps of uh, successful evangelism will not be achieved if we don't have the right music. The revival that we need as musicians, the Bible study that we need as musicians, the prayer that we need as musicians, the witnessing we have to do through music. We have to equip and train because today it's me, tomorrow it's somebody else. Let us, let us be able to be in a position to train all the other musicians, even those that say, me, I don't know how to sing. I, I cannot sing. Every one of us was given a, a voice. God gave us a voice. We've got to use that to glorify him. So let's, uh, let us be revived. Let us have a Bible study. Let's have a prayer. Let's have the witnessing. Let's have all the other members equipped and trained to serve God through music. We cannot do that if we do not have music in our lives. It's very, very important because spiritual music helps you to eat the leaves of the tree of life. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you very much. May God bless you, Ed and Suka. We have learned from you. May God bless Amen. you so much. And uh, this time we are going in questions and answers, answers session. And I hope our elder Mugera is also still around because we are going to have questions from the first speaker and the second speaker. I want to call upon you that those who want to ask, you raise your hand or you put on the chat in the inbox. 
from the chat your questions so that they can respond to you. So members, we want to thank uh, our Eridan Suga. He has taken us through evangelism, music in evangelism. I have noted some things for sure. At times we make mistakes. Find choirs, they just want to, to I, let me say, corrupt people to come where the evangelism site is. And at the end, you may find that those who were there, if they were 100, at the end of the day, you may find when you're having 30. And most of those people who come uh, in the church because of music, they end up going. Uh, before we got that, I have a testimony. One day when we were in a school choir, I remember we went somewhere, it was an effort during TMI. So as we were singing, very many people came and they, they had not yet gathered to that extent. So they came and they baptized around 30 people. But at the end of the day, after a few months, these people went back. So in the music, I think when we are selecting, we need to aim at showing people Jesus and not doing our own things. Because there are people who are in the world, they are tired, so they want to be relieved. So they will come not come to Jesus, but when the only one satisfy their own needs or to, to go out, to do away with their stress. Thank you very much. So we're going to have questions. So if you want to ask, please raise your hands so that we can see you. Yes, please. Those who have questions. Hello, members. Those who have questions. Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Antonio. Yes, please, we can hear you. Thank you. I am grateful to the presenter. Thank you, Eldon Sukuka, uh, for the presentation about music uh, But I, I want to request maybe Eldon Mugera to formulate about rock music because whenever we are giving examples of possibly what would not be appropriate, we refer to rock music. And if someone could be wondering out there, what is rock music and how can I differentiate it from other forms of music? Uh, then number two, uh, maybe you should also make a comment, does the audience uh, matter? Because as we talk about evangelism, we organize different sites. If you can, for example, the, the recent one that was at Lubogo in 2019 by, by Pastor Bachelor Dog. That the real an audience would be quite different possibly from an audience in a rural area, like maybe Katosila inside. So we realize that maybe does it matter? So that as you are already this music matters, it is music evangelism, it should be with the principles, but does this audience also matter when I'm presenting my music? Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Francis from Northern Uganda Field. Hope Erdam Gera has noted very well what you asked. And I think uh, we are going to get another person. Is Erdam Gera around? Hello, I am Chris. present. I am present, so, but I did not hear the question. The network was breaking. His network was breaking. So if it, they, they can type it in the chat, I can pick it up from there. Thank you. I think if I go to him well for the first question, he was asking to that he was asking to throw more to, to, to throw rock music.
Adam Gera? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I think he was asking that you throw light. Talk more about what you call rock music. I think that's what I also grabs, grasped for the first question. But the second one, I also did not hear it very well because of uh, network. Maybe you can type that one in the chat. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I, I was suggesting. Hello? Yes, please. I was suggesting that we first hand all the questions, then we can answer them at once. I don't know how I you think see so. that. Yes. Uh, my, thinking, my thinking is that we we'll probably take maybe five or so many questions at a time, or maybe five or whatever. Yes. Answer those, then maybe another round, because we may end up having actually an entire situation of questions. Eh? Yes. Yeah, maybe so five, or five or so, whatever number you, you, you decide. We take those, we answer those, then another round comes through. So let us first answer five questions. Now we are remaining with the four, and those you, you can also check in the, in the chat box that you can, if you find there are questions, you raise them so that they can be answered. So brothers and sisters, we are going to have more other questions so that we can answer them at once. First five questions, then after handling that, we go to the next session of questions. Thank you. Hello? Please, if you have a question, raise your oh, hands. Uh, yes, the hands are raised. Hello? The hands are, uh, hands are raised. Hello? Yes, please, Hello? you can. Yes, are you, are you hearing me? Yeah, you can ask. Yes. Yeah, my question, this is from Midwest Uganda Mission. Yes. And, and this is Bagonza George William. Uh, you very well know that her work is voluntary in the church. And then there's a syndrome of competition and pride, especially among the groups, different singing groups. So because of the pride and already most of the members are not on this platform, they have not really learned about this problem. And again, the leader is a voluntary person who actually can never use force. When he talks and people fail to, 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 to adhere, he gives up. Is that an arrangement in, our, plat in our, our, our seminar to cover that problem, to get solutions, how we are going to fight the parade and the competition among singing groups and the choir, church choir within the same church? Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. They have noted your question and they will answer you. Another person? Hello, Elder. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Good afternoon to everyone on call. My name is Alvin from Southwestern Uganda field. And uh, most of the churches I've been to, there is a challenge of uh, the announcements during worship. The, annu the announcements really take a lot of time. And uh, actually, by the time the divine service comes in, it is, it is, I think, the last announcement being given, and we only sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. So ideally, the congregation has not gotten time to really participate in congregational singing. But I've visited some other good churches in Kampala, Mount Olive, where at times you don't see many announcements, mostly like three of them. But uh, what is most delaying around uh, announcements that uh, require collecting money from the congregation. So would like really to be advised since we have elders and pastors on the, on, on the call, to be advised how other churches do it uh, and they still meet the objectives of the finances but so, so that we, are, we, we can also maybe copy from them and we have adequate time for congregational music. Thanks so much.
Ok, thank you very much. Thank you very much. They have noted your question. Uh-huh, yes, Mr. Katamba. I think you are the last. Mr. Katamba, go for you can ask your question. We cannot hear you, please. Hello, Mr. Godfrey, we cannot hear you. Mr. Unmute Katamba, you need to unmute your audio. Hello? Are you hearing me now? Yes. Uh, now, I wanted to add my voice to Mr. Mugelwa's presentation about the March announcements that take my, uh, the church's time and each that time of congregation singing. When I was heading the Department of Communication at Makerere, what we introduced was that there should be a notice board. We shouldn't bring all the announcements at the time of church singing congregations. We should do develop a habit whereby members use the notice board. Most of the announcements, such as that wedding, whatever, should be at least members should read from the notice board, but not at the time where congregation singing should be conducted. That one, I think, we are in a postmodernism era where announcements in the church should all, at least, most of them be at the notes board and the people should be advised to go to the notes board and then get to know the information concerning what should be done. I think that was my advice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Katamba. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I think Ms. Erdam Gera, we can first answer those questions. Then we check also in the inbox or in the chat so that we can answer them. Thank you very much, uh, members. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we'll start on the, with the question of rock music. I was in my first year at the university in the U.S., and a very, very dedicated Christian friend of mine from another denomination invited me to a Christian rock concert. I'd like to use a live example. And uh, because there was the word Christian, I went. When I went there, I got there, I found a room full of people, uh, very, very, very many instruments, very, very loudly played, a lot of noise. Actually, I came back with a headache. What is rock music? The purpose of rock music, I think is the best way you can define it, is actually to get into the head of someone and uh, so that they can, uh, you know, get excited and so forth. Uh, we'll talk more about this when we come into, you know, musical appreciation and so forth. I'm sure we have a number of sessions around that. But the point is, at the end of the day, by the time I left that concert, I had heard a lot of loud instruments. I had heard a lot of shouting, but I had not heard anything sensible for me to take back home. Should I, should I leave it at that? That's rock music. And this, was, this, this one even had Christian in it. The instruments were very loud. The people shouted, they screamed, and so forth. And by the time I came back, I asked myself, first of all, I paid for the concert. Secondly, it took my time. Thirdly, I came back with a headache. I didn't benefit, but uh, the time and the money was gone. Okay. Is rock music, can rock music actually be adapted to the church? I think the spirit of prophecy is very clear on that. The answer is no, no matter how we try to sanitize it. You know, the good part is that we are very good at sanitizing things, but no matter how we sanitize it, it's not going to make it to the church as an acceptable means, way of, uh, you know, music into the church. Uh, the aspect about pride and competition, moreover, in the presence of leaders 
who are voluntary. This is a very, very, very uh, interesting thing. And uh, let me simply say this. I'm going to make, make two, two comments. One is that those of us that have come here and learned, you know, there is one telecoms company, I think it was UT, which he said it's all about you. In the music ministry, it's not all about you. It's about God and his people. And if it is not because it's, it's, it's not in, that, in line with that, then there is nothing useful in it. So if you've come to sing so that we can see you, if you've come to sing so that we can see your new suit or your new dress and whatever the case might be, you miss the point. And for me, the first people to check ourselves is us, the musicians. Why? God looks at the motive. Then secondly, if you know that you're serving God, where would pride come in? Where would pride come in? Where would arrogance come in? Who are you competing with? You know, who are you competing with? And maybe to cement that, uh, some, so many years ago, when we were talking about the Association of Advanced Musicians, we actually mooted a proposal, and I would like to bring it here. Yesterday, I hinted that how can you build your neighbor's house when your house is, is falling apart? How can you build, how can you buy a new suit for your neighbor when actually you are, you are naked? How can you have grandchildren when you don't have children? The starting point for music is the church choir. We mooted a proposal more than 15 years ago and said maybe for anybody to belong to a singing group, they should actually belong to the church choir in their home church as a starters. Reflect on that. I don't want us to discuss it now, but reflect on it. Think about it because if you are part of something, then you can't compete with it. And that would also bring the church choirs back under, that, the single group back into under the leadership of the church because at, in a number of them actually don't subscribe to any church board. Uh, but that was a proposal that we gave about 15 years ago. You can think about it. Um, then the issue of announcements during worship, no time for singing, the funds drives and so forth. Uh, I think I would simply like to first of all say that uh, the church has another virus, not the COVID-19, but has another virus, whereby most of us leaders don't have enough time in the course of the week to do God's work. So a lot of the work is actually lumped on the Sabbath day, and that's when we find time to do it. That's why we see many of these things actually come up and so forth. So many announcements, so many this, so many that, so many that, so many that. But I think it begins with actually getting back to know that we are servants of God. We are here to uh, minister to his people and to worship him and to praise him. So the other aspect is actually planning and programming. The other aspect has to do with uh, finding relevant information to the relevant people. Somebody's microphone is making a lot of feedback. <laughs> You know, that, you know, we find in information from someone, I mean, targeted, let's find target audience. So I'm going to talk to the choir. I don't need an announcement in front of the church. I can speak to the choir members as a choir leader because not every church member is a choir leader. So they are actually automatically the announcement that I can actually get out of the general announcements. Then secondly, there are general announcements that as the, as the brother rightly said, can actually be put in a central place for people to access them. For churches that are able, Get a bulletin, a church bulletin, and put information in what? In a bulletin. For churches that are not, not able, find a notice board, as the brother said, and so forth, that we can actually refer. But let those very, very key uh, announcements be made. But I think usually sometimes the other problem is overemphasis. Somebody has come to talk about lunch, and they spend 30 minutes talking about, talking about lunch for the next week. You know, I think there's, there's, there's also overemphasis and so forth. Funds drives... Uh, I am happy to report that in my church, we actually don't have, we got rid of funds drives. At the beginning of every quarter, we go through the church program, we realize how much resources we need, and uh, we actually voluntarily go to members, how much can you support this with? So in their respective small groups, the fundraising is happening there. 
as we break for lunch. So you will not find somebody standing for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, fundraising for a building, fundraising for Kirika Adventist Hospital. We got rid of that. And I'm happy to report that we, we don't have a problem with that in my church. Maybe somebody can have a copy of that or a hybrid of that. You can inbox me and we can actually talk a little bit. Uh, I think those are the questions I took note of. We talked about rock music for uh, competition, announcements. Is there, am I leaving something out? So there, there's another question, Erda. Yes, please. Uh, someone was asking that he may be singing the song very well, but he is not following solfas. So is is there any problem in in we doing that? Okay. Uh, thank you. Um. I have had the privilege of either leading groups that either use the sofa notation or the staff notation to sing, or they sing, let me hear how this, how this tune goes, how the tenor goes, how the soprano goes, and somebody sings through it, <laughs> and then they sing. While I don't want to say that there is a problem, there is a, there is a challenge of people being able to actually learn and be able to do for themselves. You also have to depend on somebody else to have to remind you. But if you read, it becomes easier. And I would encourage you, you can actually do a hybrid. You can actually do both. You can actually do songs on the fly whereby somebody teaches you. And you can also learn how to read music on your Because when you give me a piece of music, I'll read it. I'll sing it. The earlier, before the existence of the church choir. And remember, the church, the singing, that very singing group is from the same church and is doing all its church activities well, how do you comment about it? Or how do you help me? How can you help us? Please come again. Please, please come again for Hello. the aid that we are doing well. Hello. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, please. You can hear. Are you Hello, hearing please. me? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, please. We can hear yes. you. Yes. I'm from Western Uganda Mission. Yes. I'm called. I'm called Mwembez Alex. Eh? Yes. And according to a statement you have just talked about, that you cannot, you cannot build a neighbor's house, leaving your, you, yours falling. Meaning that you cannot sing in a, a singing group from another different church, and yet yours, you don't have any choir at your church. Or you don't belong yes. to the, the church choir. And my question goes that what if the, the singing group started earlier than the starting of the church choir, and you find that this, that very singing group is from the same church? Yes. Fulfilling all the responsibilities of the church. And they are they don't belong to the church choir that has just started in all the church activities. Yep. And we don't belong yep. to the church choir that has just started. We have got you, we have got you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mogera, I think he, you you answer him so that you can go back to to Mama Esther. Uh, thank you very much, brother. Brother Alex, hey. thank you. Um, it is true, some churches have started and they have not started a church choir and the singing group has actually come up and done very well. Okay? Um, I think if you ask me from my own, pers my own perspective, a church choir 
a good vibrant church choir is the first identity of the church. So what would it cost these members of this singing group actually to remain their singing group, but actually also participate in actually strengthening the church choir? Because if the church choir is doing very well, the singing group is doing very well, and the church choir is doing very badly, what do they say? How do you identify, how, how, how is your church identified? <laughs> how is your church identified? The singing group is doing very badly, but the church choir is doing, the singing group is doing very well, but the church choir is doing very badly. How do you identify your church? You know, and they say, eh, this singing group is very good, but the church choir where they come from is terrible. So let's go back and build the structures. It's okay. If the singing group came up first, it's not a crime. But let's go back and build the foundation. The foundation of music in the church is the church choir. Let's go and build it so that it can actually do well as well. Okay. Thank you, Elder. Just to add, uh, there were other questions that came in uh, in regards to entertainment. Uh, issues with entertainment are very, very, very pertinent and uh, I think it's creating a confusion, but I would like us to agree and uh, have our take point home is in the way that all the music at the end of the day should glorify God. It's very, very important. I don't know how best we can stress that, but know that even God himself uses spiritual songs to touch the hearts of us sinners and it leads to repentance as well, okay? There's a lot, a lot that the spiritual songs can give us as compared to entertainment. Why entertainment is an issue is you, you'll find, I'll give you an example. We have uh, the scared music and then we have the secular music. Why do you think very many people can remember the secular songs compared to the church hymns, for example? because there's an element there, okay? So it's very important for us to, as we worship God, as we do evangelism, look out for the scared music, look out for the message and have that, have an impact in our lives and we leave it, okay? Other than having the entertainment alone. The other question that uh, had come in was... Uh, regarding the election of the music coordinator and the team. And actually, when you read the church man, you realize that uh, even the members of the church choir are all supposed to be uh, nominated by the nominating committee, okay? And it's not only the choir director alone. It's yes. the entire choir members, all of them are supposed to be nominated by the nominating committee, vetted, and like it's done for all the other church officers, have all of them dedicated at once and then be able to have them serve the Lord the way they are supposed to. So it's an issue that we need to look out for in our churches and ensure that we have that streamlined as well as we go along. The other Amen. question was, um, was uh, from um, Alvin. From? Alvin, where he was talking about the ad adequate time for the congregational singing. I think Elder will be addressed that, but ensure that at least you have uh, about five songs and five songs by three minutes, uh, that's about 20 minutes or so. 30 minutes of worship will be able to get the people uplifted, ready for the message. One of our colleagues was saying that um, uh, even the members themselves, some people say the, the congregation singing was boring. Um, people, I would like you to take an opportunity if we happen to congregate again together, even in our homes as we, we do the congregational singing in our homes. Look out for that total member involvement of all the members in the congregation. Uh, you realize that even when the congregation singing is going on, some people are holding their cheeks like this. Some people are still worried. Some people are not present. Physically, yes, you're there, but where is the mind? Where is the soul? It's very, very important that worship is participative. If there is no participation of the member 
worshiping God, then at the end of the session, that person will definitely tell you that it was boring. Okay, but if you have happened to organize music Sabbath, for example, hymn music Sabbath, and you have all the members fully involved, you realize that everyone will go back home refreshed, nourished, praising God for what had, has happened to them throughout that Sabbath. So it's very, very important that we get to know that it is participative. I have to participate, everyone has to participate, the children, the youth, everyone is supposed to participate. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Nsuka, I want also to talk about what are the right instruments to be used? The right instruments, talk about it. Thank you very much, Elder Peter. Um, the right instruments, is uh, sessions to talk about in the acapella and all the rest, okay? So is the instruments themselves have no problem, okay? But the question remains is how do you use that instrument? I might be wrong but how do you use the instruments you have at hand? If it's the keyboard, for example, and you look at for the, all the drums it has and all the integrals that it has, you can mix it and it will give you a, a, wrong, a, a, wrong, a wrong arrangement that will distort the message of the song, okay? So it's very important to check out, to check out how you have used that instrument. If it's a violin, if it's a keyboard, if it's a piano, if it's, if it's um, uh, a trombone, if it's a harp, whatever instrument it is, how are you using it in the worship of our God? Okay, it's very, very important because minus having other instruments attached to cultural elements, we can use the harps to praise God, but how do you use it? So if it is not used the right way, then definitely you'll have the poison of the instrument distorting the message of the song. So it's very important as uh, music, music producers and uh, arrangers and uh, composers get the right instruments used properly for the message not to be distorted. I hope that answers the question for now as we wait for the other Thank sessions you. that are coming. Thank you very much. May God bless you also. Uh, I, I, I hope we have other people want to ask, more five people, more five people. And I think Mr. Suga, I'm going to assign you, you check, you check in, our, in our chat, check in our chat so that you can note the question is there as Mr. Mugera is ready to answer those who we, we ask. So more five people, then we answer your questions. Thank you. More five people. If you have a question, raise your hand. Thank you so much, members. My hand is already raised up to death. Yes. Of oh, I'm Joshua Amayere, the Joshua yes. According to my observation, based on the experience I've seen in most of the churches, the challenge is not is not that people don't know in the chat, but sometimes it depends on the leader. You find that like, like now we are here in the seminar, we should also be so careful on how we shall take this message to the churches where we belong. Because now you find you are a music director in the chat, you have learned, you have understood all the ways how music should be handled in the chat. And now here is your church elder who knows nothing. Here is your pastor who you know, of 1990 doesn't know anything concerning the music. Now, when you come in form of implementation, it becomes a burden on you. My prayer is that we can be able to organize in our entity, coordinate with the church leadership of the entity, so that our elders and the pastors can be put on board in the diversity. Because now, when it comes to announcement, it is the elders who are the managers of the church. They are the ones who make programs of the church. Now, you as a, a music coordinator or a church chorister, you may not have 
an opportunity to guide them because the fellow they tell you who, who are you. We are the bosses. I am the elder. Don't you know that I'm the elder of this church? So we need to help our elders understand the role of music in worship so that we don't get a burden. But I'm in, uh, as a matter of concern, this may not be done by an individual. We need to advise each other. We see how the church leadership, the populace of the church, can help us to update all pastors and elders for having an effective worship through worship in music. May the Almighty God bless you. Thank you very much, our leader, our leader from Midwestern Uganda Mission. Thank you very much. Another one for me, I cannot see the hands. So if you have a question, you can Thank unmute yourself. You. My name then is you. My yes, name is From the Central Ghana Conference. My issue is on a is about the entertainment that uh, Ms. Ansuwa talked about. I pray that uh, you guys make some more research on regards to the people who came to church in, uh, on the basing, basing on the music, the entertainment that they, 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 they got from the choirs and then went out, out of church because when they came to church, for example, choirs they called Golden Gate, were no longer singing in the church, and those members went out. And then, for example, there is a man who talked about uh, the crusade that was in Logogo recently. I pray that you make some more research, because I don't think that in that uh, during that crusade we had choirs that were using organs. It was just uh, verbal music. I pray that you make some research even on that effort. Are there some members who also went out because? Uh, because of the church cost, I may think that most of the church members, when members are brought to church, it's upon now the church leadership to look for those people and cater for them. It's not about uh, the choirs that probably brought them to church. So I pray that we make some research in regards to the issue of entertainment. Well, thank you very much. We have noted that. Can you have another person? Another person who is a concern? Hello, please. Another person with a question or a concern? Hello? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Ask. Uh Okay, thank you, our elder. Welcome. Uh, my question is about my question is about uh, these singing groups. Uh, previously, as we grew up, we used to hear about only choirs. I don't know if I missed that uh, that point before because I tuned in when you had already tackled uh, the singing groups. I want to know how have these singing groups come about? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think Elda Mugerwa. Elda Mugerwa. Actually, Elda Elda Noah handled that question as Elda Mugerwa mm -hmm. and Elda Sue often rises with those he has brought. <laughs> so, application younger, we do Please unmute the power. Handle that question. Okay. No. Yes. yes, please. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, please? Yes, you can hear. You can hear me. Okay. Now, uh, thank you so much, uh, dear viewers and uh, listeners. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to actually respond to this question. How do the singing groups come about? 
I may not give a, a comprehensive uh, uh, answer to why the singing groups come in. It is true in the past we used to have church choirs, but at present the singing groups are more than the choirs. So why do we have more singing groups? I think there was a general problem. Yes, please. Uh, I don't know why you were the one answering, but I don't know. I don't know whether the problem was general or it was mine alone. Yes, I think it was a general problem. I think Elder Noah finished, then we go to Elder Mugera. From Elder Mugera, we go to Elder Suga, tell us what he has noted in the chat box. Then we end, I think, if Mama Esther will conclude. So Elder Noah, if you are there, you can conclude your question. You are under, you can conclude the question. Hello, Pris. I, I don't know what's happening. I think Elder Mugera, if you are still around, you can answer the other questions as we're going through and so The Mugera has gone off. She has, has uh, posted on WhatsApp the problem, so you can go on. Okay, okay. So, so let me ask, ask you. Pastor, 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 is to answer your question? Thank you so much. Uh, this concern of why singing groups are mushrooming is uh, as a result maybe of not knowing <laughs> issues to do with the structures of music in our local churches. I want to thank Mama Wiser because of this presentation that now that we, are, we have been taught on our structures, the, the local church co music coordinators will help us a lot. So where there are singing groups, I recommend you to work with your local church music coordinators to ensure that church choirs are there. That is my guidance on this. And as we continue attending more Please, Mr. Speaker, we are trainings, not to you. we will get helped more. Thank you. Thank you very much, our pastor. God bless you. So, Erdan Suga, yes, I'm giving you one minute because time has gone. I'm giving you one minute or two. Then we go to Mama Esther. Thank, thank you, Brother Peter. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, um, uh, the issue of uh, there were two issues that came in uh, the chat. Uh, still to do with the uh, entertainment, but Brother David has uh, also clarified from uh, US, he's following. Uh, uh, the issue of uh, entertainment is very, very crucial. But before I conclude the karaoke music, all the, the acapellas, some, someone gave an example of uh, 
our brothers. I would request you to kindly be patient uh, for next weekend. We are going to have those addressed as well in our seminars for the coming weekend. Now, the issue of entertainment, the, the whole issue with entertainment is the moment it comes from music touching the soul and it gets to entertaining the body, then know that that's where the poison starts from. Like it or not, that's where the poison starts from. Brother Peter, uh, Elder, Elder Mugero has a point to make. He has his hand raised as well. So you'll, I'll request you give him an opportunity as well as I conclude. So it's very, very important for us to ensure that anything that is entertaining, that's where the, that's where the poison starts from. If you look very carefully, I'll give you an example. If you kneel down to pray and then, okay, if you're there seated and you start singing, holy, 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 Lord almighty. And then there is holy, holy, holy. Do you have a difference there? There is no way you're going to match up that. So ensure that even what we have presented in our churches, even what we have presented to the communities, to God's people in the world, let it be soul uplifting, not soul and body entertaining, but let it be touching souls, let, let it be redirecting the people back to Christ. If we can achieve that, we'll, have, we'll go very, very far with, um, with uh, evangelism and worshiping our Lord. Through songs, remember that even Satan himself, when he tempted Jesus Christ, okay, Jesus was brought up in a way with singing, okay? He was glorifying God as well, okay? So the songs that we use have a very, very big role in our lives, not only in our lives, but even in the people we want to tell about Jesus Christ. So let's do, our, let's do everything because from the start, even our, in our creation, God created a musical mind. All our minds are musical. If you look through the references uh, we shared, you'll be able to look out some, for some videos that we put there. They'll be able to show you how even the brain itself reacts to the rock music, for example, and the worship music. You'll see a clear difference of even how the brain itself responds to that. So you have got to be very careful to ensure that we have our music for Christ as their personal savior. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Aida Suga. God bless you. Going to Aida Mugera, but before we go there, you allow me for today. As for me, I say thank you very much. Aida Mugera, from there, from Aida Mugera, we're going to our Mama, Esther, to conclude for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for moderating today's session. Job well done. Thank you. Um, for me, I'd like to, be very, very, to touch on very quickly musical instruments. I would like to say that uh, music, the problem is not with the musical instruments. The problem with the users. I worshipped in a church where we had more than elder. 40 or 50 musical instruments. Amen. I, I worshipped in a church where we had more than 40 instruments. And the instruments were used, very, very glorifying to God. And actually by 8, 15, 8, 20, a church of about 800 members had about 300, 400 members present before summer school even began. Why? They had come to have a musical experience with the church. Uh, my brothers in the north, I am actually looking for a dungu. I'm personally looking for a dunga and I'm very serious because I think it can actually be used to actually glorify who? God in the church and uh, so forth. Uh, in terms of entertainment, of course, there is the issue of uh, the client. I said yesterday, I'll say it again and I'll say it again now. You cannot change the face of music if you do not interact with the congregation. We have a vast section of the congregation that actually wants to be entertained. And that includes pastor, some pastors, some elders, and some church members. 
So until we actually address that vast chunk of people, we can talk about this until the cows come home, but they are there and we worship with them, we sit with them, we eat with them. So it's not just about the musicians, let's balance the boat and balance the equation. Then the aspect of singing groups versus church choirs. Uh, the first choir I led, I must have been like 16 or 17 and was in Guayse. And at that point in time, there is an elder called Elder Wamara somewhere. He knew what the church choir needed and he made sure that the church provided that. So while we cast get the musicians themselves, and I agree with the brother that has actually talked about that, you know, we need to balance and whatever the case might be. Why are singing groups popular? They sing because the church has ne neglected its responsibility of taking care of church choirs. They look for their uniforms, they find their shoes, they find their transport, and they find somebody to pay them. So the church needs to go back to the drawing board. If we were to ask on this platform, how many churches have a fraction of their LCB, local church budget, appointed to or apportioned to the music ministry? You'll be surprised that there might actually be none. And so we, there, there, there are issues on, on, on either side that we need to actually put, to put right. The musicians have work to do. The church administration has work to do. And uh, the, the congregation has work to do. And as we work on those three fronts, I am certain that we we'll actually get good and vibrant music in the churches. Thank you. And over to you, Madam Weissel. Thank you, Brother Ben. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, our dear facilitators for today, our MC for today, Elder Peter. Thank you so much for the great elaboration in today's presentation. We have been so blessed. There are so many lessons that have been learned as we'll be sharing more. But want to congratulate our facilitators today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elder, for the explanations and all that we have been delighted to hear. Thank you, Elder Suboga, for standing in for Elder Sabwe Moses and for presenting uh on behalf and it was a great presentation i believe everybody uh was blessed friends what we can pick out from today's presentation is a lot we'll give you a summary of it on our whatsapp but today we've been talking about the adventist music philosophy one focusing on worship what does it say about worship but then what does it say about evangelism? All in all, what we are saying is, let us do for the glory of God. Number one, for the glory of God. Number two, we ourselves living spiritually first, and then we can transform the others. If we are to lead music in worship, and then music for evangelism. For example, if somebody is adulterous, and then you are known very well, you are an adulteress, and then you're singing. <laughs> it is very terrible. That is why we, we, we talked about, you know, being in good and regular stand for the church. And so it is very important to emulate and make sure that our spiritual life is high so that we can be able to live exemplary, even what we are singing, either in worship or even evangelism. Want to thank you for the great presentation, great ideas. I have been busy here writing. I've written a lot and noted down. And I believe by the grace and power of God, we will be able to ensure that this information disseminates down in our local churches, especially congregations, pastors, elders, and all those in charge of the worship team. Yes, we may have very few here, but it's the beginning. We begin small as we go on growing, because very soon we'll be causing a special meeting for pastors alone and elders countrywide, led by our leaders after realizing all these issues. And we'll be giving them more information and seeing how things should run, especially with proper <coughs> worship. So I pray that you continue giving in your bright ideas, your suggestions as we compile, and we will have a clear and clean paper for guidance so that 
our worship through music is a blessing to everybody. Uh, that has been all for today. Our discussions will continue on our WhatsApp groups. I don't know if uh, our WhatsApp groups that we will conclude this week through the WhatsApp group. More and more discussions and presentation will be made in details. Thank you for presenters who have hitted on the various aspects, instruments and all that. But we have elaborated time for each of those as we'll be sharing our program. Once again, thank you for your commitment and for being there and for giving us more of these minutes. After five, our program ends five, but thank you for giving us these few more minutes and God bless you. Once again, thank you for being the chief donors of this program by buying us with some, some data to support the learning here. Thank you once again, our presenters. Thank you, Elder Peter, for leading us through and being a, a, a good MC. I pray that now, if you need to be an MC, <coughs> we need at least two of them. One coordinates the, the messages uh, in the chat room and one coordinates the, the audio. Please, we need you for next Sabbath. You can let us know. You can contact Elder Sawe if you'd love to serve. And then I think the best will be giving per entity. So if it is Eastern Uganda field, we have MCs from Eastern Uganda field. If it is Southwestern, we need Southwestern. If it's Northern Uganda field, we'll do that so that we all participate and then we all share. God bless you. We'll be sharing the presentations today again on our WhatsApp group and the Facebook and the YouTube. God bless you. And back to MC, Peter, so that you tell us who is giving us the closing prayer. Yeah, so thank you very much, Mama Esther. I want to thank God that today has given us a good day and our last in this week. I pray that all of us come back next weekend. I also want to add my voice to that one of Mama. Thank you for being our chief donors of this program. May God bless you so much. Uh, elders, pastors who have embraced this program, God bless you so much. I know I want you also, Mama Esther, to add this one on your notebook or in your notebook that the, this concern is also important. People to, to lead music, they should have knowledge of music in our local churches. Sometimes you find they have chosen someone who is totally, let me say, totally absent from music. <laughs> I can use this word. <laughs> He's totally absent from what we call music ministry. And is the one to head music in the church. That's why you find that the local church is missing out. So other things, you have said them. May God bless you so much. I'm very happy. Uh, thank you very much. When we are in mission, we said we will go and let us continue reaching the world. Thank you very much. And I want to ask Pastor Isingoma Edward to lead us in a closing prayer. God bless you so much. I love you so much. I love you. Let us pray. Our friend Jesus, we want to thank you so much for talking to us today through our facilitators about music. May you give us the strength to put into practice the lessons we have learned so that your work in the local church through music may be improved and bring glory to your name. As we leave this platform, may you continue blessing us, abide with us, Till we meet again next week. So this is our humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. In my areas, my pastors. Amen. 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 God bless you, members. And we shall end it here because we have a vigil for the late Mrs. Sally. 
just joining another Zoom. God bless you. Amen. Bless yes, you too. Yes, please. Come on, look out in here, is it? Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.